Hello, and welcome to AIM Solder's first edition of Ask AIM. We want to bring our support and expertise to you, the customer. I have Tim O'Neill, the Director of Product Management for AIM Solder, here answering questions today. Our first question asks, for a no-clean solder process, is it still necessary to use a cleaning solution to remove flux residues? That's a great question, Logan. The whole point of a no-clean is that we can leave the residues in place without causing harm to the assembly's function or reliability. However, there are certain applications that require removing the flux residue. And in the case of a no-clean, using a solvent-type cleaner is required. So either you use soap and water to remove the residue or you use a solvent. They will not be removed with straight water alone. In fact, they're engineered to be hydrophobic, meaning that they want to shun water and they don't want to have a relationship with water. And that's how they can be left in the board without fear of corrosion and conductivity because they don't complete the triad that's required for electrochemical migration, which requires moisture, a current, and ionic species. So the no-clean residues will have ionics left behind on the board, um, but they are part of an engineered system that ensures that the three pieces of the puzzle can't assemble themselves and create a reliability concern. Our next question asks, we are currently using a water-soluble paste and are looking into a no-clean chemistry. What are some advantages of using no clean over water soluble and what are some considerations that need to be taken into account if we were to make a switch? That's a great question, Logan. The two major reasons for considering a switch from a water wash process or a water soluble process to a no clean process are typically a cost saving activity and to accommodate lower and lower standoff devices and the inability to remove flux residue from under those devices reliably. In the cost saving measure, obviously turning off a washer, which is a very expensive process, can save a significant amount of money per assembly when that process can be eliminated. Not to mention there can be advantages in terms of freeing up floor space, um, associated costs or the attendant costs of maintaining the equipment and the effluent and disposal and all of the uh, things that go along with cleaning the circuit boards. In terms of the low standoff devices, water soluble flux residues are more dangerous, for lack of a better term, if left behind inadvertently. The water soluble flux residues can be conductive and or corrosive if left in place. So they must be removed. Problem is, is, is as components become closer and closer to the circuit board, we now have components that are essentially mated to the bottom of the circuit board. The residue can become entrapped and it becomes impossible to remove them effectively. A no clean residue can be left in place without causing corrosion or conductivity issues. There are some considerations when making the transition. I think first and foremost is the acceptance of the presence of residues. If somebody has been building circuit boards for years in a process where the residues aren't present at the end of the process, and then suddenly they have residues there, there are some aesthetic challenges to overcome, particularly for EMS provi providers where the customer now has to become accustomed to the fact there's going to be residue on their board. Uh, hopefully, the cost advantage makes them more accepting of that residue. Uh, and uh, in fact, many components now mandate the use of a no-clean process because of the standoff issue I mentioned earlier. Another consideration uh, is the handling of the circuit boards, meaning that there is no process at the end where all of the ionic species that could have made their way onto the board are getting removed. So you have to be clean from the minute those boards are unwrapped from the package till they are installed into the final assembly. The boards have to remain uh, clean. So finger cots, gloved hands, 
um, clean workstations. We don't want anything that has uh, ionic potential making its way onto the circuit board in a no clean process because unlike a water soluble process, there isn't a wash step at the end to wash all that stuff off. And then finally, we need to make sure that the assembly itself doesn't have some characteristic that prevents the use of a no clean process. There are certain applications and particularly high voltage applications or RF applications where the mere presence of residue can affect the performance of the device. So the residues characteristics have to be taken into consideration when assessing the performance and reliability requirements of the assembly, meaning can my board be made into a no clean process? Those are a short list of considerations that should be um, addressed when considering a switch to from a water soluble to a no clean. Now, keep in mind, you always retain the option to remove no clean residues. It's just that it can't be done with straight DI water. It would require a solvent wash or a uh, saponifier or soap chemistry incorporated into the wash step. So some of our clients will use a combination of no clean process and cleaning process so boards that require washing, they'll wash in their um, saponified wash system and boards that don't require washing will just pass on through as true no clean assemblies. So that's a quick summary of changing from a water soluble to a no clean. There are other considerations such as aperture redesigns that might be required because the um, no cleans have uh, different reflow requirements, volume requirements, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another one that comes to the issue that can crop up is uh, ICT issues because you have to probe through the residues, but those are case by case. I wouldn't say that those are universal. So I hope that uh, gives you a quick summary. And uh, if you have more interest in understanding the challenges of transitioning from a water wash process to an opening process, AIM tech support and AIM's website are available. And a lot of information is in those resources in order for you to educate yourself.